If, however, the defendant or debtor were of chieftain grade, it was necessary not only to give notice, but also to fast upon him, Truscott. This fasting consisted in going to his residence and waiting there for a time without food. If the plaintiff did not, within a certain time, receive satisfaction for his claim, or a pledge, therefore, he forthwith, accompanied by a law agent, witnesses, and others, seized his distress. Ancient Laws and Institutes of Ireland, Volume 1 So fasting was an additional requirement in legal procedure that was used especially when the defendant was of nemed or noble privileged class. The aim of having this added step of fasting was to put social pressure, moral pressure, onto the nemed in order to compel him to the justice of the weaker party. There was an economic aspect to this as well, in that the fine of the case was doubled if the nemed or privileged class person eats during the fast. They fasted outside the home of the defendant probably from dawn until dusk and not actually until death or throughout the night. When we think about fasting for justice today in Ireland, many Irish minds of a certain age would likely drift towards thoughts of Bobby Sands and the H-Block hunger strikers of 1981. While this is an important chapter of modern Irish history, the principle of fasting for justice or hunger striking in Ireland is not a new one. It was practiced by the early Irish in the times of the Brehan Laws as a means of compelling a stronger party to justice. Writing in 1894, almost a century before the H-Block hunger strikers, Lawrence Ginnell said, quote, Distress by way of fasting, now so strange to us because so long obsolete, was clearly designed in the interests of honesty and of the poor as against the mighty. This form of distress was called trustgood or fasting. It carried social weight and had legal support as an act of due process. It was a principle which sought to empower a weaker party in compelling a stronger party to comply with justice. It should be said that the act of trustgood in early Irish society was not extreme as we might first think, as the daily protest most likely only lasted from dawn till dusk for a set period of time. This meant probably missing the main meals of the day, but not all food entirely. So what we learned from this is that the act was a symbolic act, but it was one that was also very effective. A custom developed in Ireland making trust good a requirement, a necessary legal step that had to be first followed before a member of the Nemed classes could be brought to court. This obligation on the weaker party did not hinder them in achieving justice. The primary aim of Truscott was to put pressure on the privileged wrongdoer, morally, legally and financially. Moral condemnation would follow the Nemed defendant who dared to eat while someone was conducting the ancient custom of Truscott against him. And if this wasn't enough, the law held that the initial amount being disputed in the claim would double. If the Nemed defendant still resisted or ignored the call to justice, they would themselves lose the protection and benefits of the law. Truscott could therefore be described as a double-edged sword. On one hand, it provided a mechanism for the parties to deal with the matter privately and so protect the Nemed's honour. On the other, it empowered a weaker party into a much stronger position where a they have the moral support of their community b it enhances the legal power where the status of an individual would otherwise be too low to compel the wrongdoer and c they stand to gain more financially if the offender fails to cooperate a built-in enforcement mechanism which added incentives for the nomad defendant's compliance Fasting for Justice in India In the ancient laws of India called the Laws of Manu, there is a process called Acharitan, 
sometimes translated to mean distress, which was one of the processes in which a creditor might recover property they had lent. A charitan is explained to mean the sitting derna at the door of a debtor, abstaining from food till, by fear of the creditor dying at his door, compliance on the part of the debtor is exacted. Derna is described by Elphinstone somewhat differently. Common creditors, he says, also resort to the practice which is called derna, but without threats of self-murder which the Brahmins use. They prevent their debtor eating by an appeal to his honour and also by stopping his supplies, and they fast themselves the whole time they compel their debtor to do so. This sort of compulsion is used even against princes and must not be resisted by force. It is a very common mode employed by troops to obtain payment of arrears and is then directed either against the paymaster, the prime minister or the sovereign himself. From Ancient Laws and Institutes of Ireland, Volume 1. Mm-hmm.